Duterte's ambitious Build, Build, Build project to transform the Philippines could become his legacy. Ito ang naitala sa Forbes magazine. Indikasyon na hindi lamang sa Pilipinas nagmamarka ang mga reforma ng kasalukuyang pamahalaan sa ekonomiya. Tunghayan natin ang mga naging bahagi ng pagpapaliwanag ng Basis Conversion Development Authority. Over the next decade, tinatayang nasa $180 billion ang infrastructure spending ng pamahalaan na dito'y direktang inilaan sa countryside development. Ito ang mga nauna ng nasa isa publiko ng BCDA. Ito ang 75 flagship projects, kinabibilangan ng 6 airports, 9 railways, 3 bus rapid transits, 32 roads and bridges, at 4 seaports. The Pampanga Chamber of Commerce, to the PCCI, to all the business organizations represented here today, uh, thank you very much for organizing such a huge event. I didn't realize that the event and the venue was going to be this huge. So we congratulate the organizers for a successful event. Of course, I'd like to uh, thank my uh, titos here in Pampanga, si Tito Levi Gaos, our gracious host, our PCCI chairman, uh, uh, our Pam, Pam, Pam Cham chairman, sorry, uh, Tito Levi Gaos. Of course, ang parang uh, tito ko na rin dito sa Pampanga, si Vice Chairman Rene Romero. Matagal na po na kaming magkasama ni Tito Rene. Uh, Pam Cham Chairman, Tito Jess, sir. And of course, our Honorary Chairman of the PCCI, uh, Mr. Seri Ortiz Luis. Welcome, sir. Welcome to Pampanga. And of course, our partner in CESA, Secretary Raul Gambino, kasama po natin ng matagal na. I think, Secretary, mga mga more than one decade na tayong nakikipaglaba, no? Nung oh, tagal na. No? Um, and nakita po natin ang napakagandang mga nangyayari sa Northern Luzon, sa Cagayan, sa Santa Ana, sa Seza at talagang yung uh, pangarap ng matagal na ni Secretary Gambino na umunlad at uh, talagang bumulusok ang pag-unlad sa Northern Luzon ay nakikita na niya under his stewardship. So, Secretary Raul, congratulations for all the hard work you've been doing for CESA. Alam niyo po, uh, for the past year and a half, or almost two years that Secretary Raul and I have been privileged to be part of the government of our dear President, President Duterte, we have seen so much change happening not just in northern and central Luzon, but all throughout the country. And uh, despite the, what we like to call noise that we hear from various groups, on the ground, Secretary Gambino and I, and President Noel Manangkil, sorry, my partner in Clark is also here, uh, have seen really the change happening on the ground. And you see it not just in uh, statistics, like the growth rates that we've been experiencing, the employment rates that have been going up, the foreign direct investment that's been coming in, but you see it in the lives of people in Santa Ana, in Pampanga, in Tarlac, in Pangasinan, in Bataan, in Bulacan, everywhere here in North and Central Luzon. We have seen it. We have seen the lives of people change for the better. And I think that lies at the core of what the President is trying to do for our country. And build, 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 as Secretary Gambino so eloquently talked to you about earlier, is really the core of this change for the entire Philippine economy. Alam niyo po, the first quarter growth is very telling, 6.8%. If you look at year on year, last year we only grew, I think, by 6.4%. Because usually the first quarter is the slowest quarter. No? Alam, alam po ninyo yan, no? kayong mga matagal na sa negosyo. Ang first quarter, usually yan ang mabagal. Eh. Nagsisimula pa lang na umarangkada ang ating ekonomiya for the, for the calendar year. And to grow at 6.8%, this is a very good omen for 2018. 
Because in all likelihood, we will be growing faster in the next three quarters. No, quarter two and quarter three especially, which are usually the quarters with the strongest growth. And the main driver, if you look at the numbers, was really government spending on infrastructure. For the first time in decades, for the first time in decades, government infrastructure has really been leading the way, uh, the public spending on infrastructure has been leading the way for the economy. In the past years, laging na babatikos ang gobyerno na hindi ginagasta ang pera. Laging naga underspend Secretary Jokno a few weeks ago reported that we actually overspent, meaning we spent above budget, above target. No? And this really is the epitome of build, build, build. And if you look beyond the statistics, build, build, build is not just the statistics you see on the screen. 2.6% in the last six administrations. First year pa lang po ng Duterte administration, more than double na 5.4% in 2017. This year, we're even raking that up to 6.3%. And it will even go up further to more than 7% by the year 2022. Pero ano po ang translation nitong spending na ito? Simply po, trabaho. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Build, build, build leads to jobs, jobs, jobs. Jobs for the people of Pampanga, for the people of Tarlac, for the people of Cagayan, for the people of North and Central Luzon, and all over the country. And jobs leads to, more jobs leads to higher incomes uh, and a better life for all our people and their families. And that is really the point that President Duterte is trying to make. Sabi nga ni Secretary Gambino, hindi na pwede ang pwede na. Nung nakaraan, pwede na. Diba? Ngayon, ang sinasabi nila, pwede pala. No? Pwede pala ito. Pwede palang mag-create ng napakaraming trabaho para sa ating mga kababayan ang gobyerno. Nung nakaraan, hindi magawa. Okay na yung pwede na. Kay President Duterte, $160 billion in six years. More than 8 trillion pesos po yan. Unprecedented. Never. Never has this ever happened in our history. And as Secretary Gambino said earlier, the move towards federalism is meant to really make sure that this continues beyond the term of the President. Yan po ang legacy ng federalismo at Nung efforts ni Secretary Raul Gambino, who are leading the way to a federal government. So, para po sa, dito sa atin sa North Central Luzon, kitang kita po natin ang mga napakalalaking mga proyektong gagawin ng ating Pangulo. Apat lang po ito sa pinakamagalaki, pero marami pang iba. Marami pang iba. At mapapansin nyo po, ang buong North Central Luzon, ang talagang magbe-benepisyo dito sa mga proyektong ito. Unang-una na, syempre, ang... Dito, Levy, ikang taon na bang pinaplano ang Clark Airport? Mahigit dalawang dekada na yata. Mahigit two decades na. Uh, Tito Jess, di ba? More than two decades. Pero it has taken a president all the, from coming from all the way down south in Davao to really make this happen. And this will happen very soon. The new terminal, as I will show you later on, just to give you, to excite you a little bit, uh, will be opening in 2020, June, before June of 2020. The Manila Clark High Speed Rail, again, Tito Levy, Tito Rene, Tito Jess, ilang beses na ba kayo na groundbreaking sa North Rail? Parang ano na yata, medyo madami-daming beses na. No? No, marami ng plano ito. No? Pero ngayon, mangyayari na po yan. Secretary Art Tugade has promised Manila to Clark to be finished by 2021. And we are all very confident that it will happen. And it doesn't stop there. You notice, Secretary Raul, it goes up all the way to La Union and pinakita na po sa inyo yung kadugtong ng violet na linyang yan. All the way na yan hanggang Cagayan, hanggang Cesa. So, Yung Subi Clark Railway naman, matagal na rin plano yan. Just, alam nyo po, sila Tito Levy, sila, sila Tito Rene, 
nung nangangampanya po si President Duterte at si Secretary Cayetano nung eleksyon, sinabi nila, President du- Mayor Duterte, Secretary, Senator Alan, isa lang po ang gusto namin sanang marinig sa inyo. Itutuloy po ninyo at bibilisan ninyo ang development ng Central at Northern Luzon. At siguro naman po, hindi po nagdi-disappoint ang ating Pangulo at si Secretary Alan Cayetano. Tinupad nila ang kanilang pangako at ngayon nakikita nyo na lahat ng mga proyektong to nangyayari na ngayon. And finally, of course, yung ating pinakaambisyosong proyekto to date, yung New Clark City. Alam nyo po, ang gobyerno po ni Presidente Duterte ang, ay, hindi, ang, ay hindi kami ang nag-isip nito. Hindi kami ang nag-umpisa nito. Uh, sinimugan po ito noong 2015 under President Noy Noy. Pero doon nyo po makikita kung gano'n ka uh, kung gano ka sincero at gano ka uh, mapagmagasakit ni Pangulong Duterte. Wala po siyang pakialam sa politika. You know, our Philippine, our governments have been notorious for stopping or halting projects of previous governments. Hindi ba, Secretary Garol? The President has done no such thing. In fact, he said, all the projects of the previous governments, not just of the, of the Aquino administration, will not only be continued, they will be fast-tracked. And New Clark City is one very important example of that. And later, matutuwa kayo, I will be showing you the ongoing construction in New Clark City that is already happening today. So all these projects will really result in the kind of inclusive growth that our President has been talking about. Alam po si Pangulo, ano ho yan eh? No? Very little talk, but very, but a lot of action. No? And those actions you already see now. For the first phase of New Clark City, we are building on 60 hectares out of 9,500 hectares in New Clark City. And that first phase we are calling the National Government Administrative Center. It's 50 hectares between, 60 hectares between now and 2022. It will have two sports facilities which we will be using next year in the Southeast Asian Games in December. In fact, the Southeast Asian Games Federation is actually here now being hosted by Secretary Cayetano and newly elected um, Philippine Olympic Commission President Ricky Vargas. They are here in the Philippines now. There will be six government buildings, housing facilities, health facilities, commercial and recreation facilities, and education facilities. Alam nyo po, matagal nang pinag-uusapan ng gobyerno ang paglipat ng mga government offices from Metro Manila to other areas in, through, in Luzon and throughout the country. But it is only President Duterte that has stopped the talking and started the acting. And he has already mandated this. And the first six government buildings where government offices from Metro Manila will move to Clark, to New Clark City, will start in 2020. We are already building the first two buildings as we speak with another six buildings to follow. And I just wanted to show you what to expect from the National Government Administrative Center in New Clark City in Capas Interior.
place of New Clark City. These are just other photos and renderings of the facilities there. This is the Athletic Stadium. It's a 20,000-seater stadium. Uh, and we will be, you will be happy to know, especially for us here in Central Luzon, we will be using material from Central Luzon. In fact, we will be using a new fiber which we will use, uh, wherein we will use the lahar that we have in abundance here in Central Luzon. Um, we will also be building the aquatic center for our aquatic sports facilities. So again, inspired by the, the Capiz windows, which you see all over Central Luzon and throughout the country. There will be a beautiful sprawling park for the public, for everybody in this area. Alam niyo po, itong panaginip ni Presidente, no? Talagang, kasi sa Metro Manila po, wala nang ganyan, eh, no? We've all used up our green spaces, but because this is a master-planned city, we, can, we, we really have the way to really preserve the natural environment and really preserve our open spaces for the people. This will be the Athletes' Village, which will be used also for government housing after the SEA Games. This is government housing units. So for the government employees in the room, siguro dapat magpareserbo na kayo dito. And these will be, these will be the first two buildings um, of the government, uh, uh, of the first government agencies that will be moving to New Clark City. This will be the Integrated Operations and Disaster Risk Recovery Center. This will serve as the um, business continuity center uh, in the event of a disaster happening in the capital. So there will be uh, several agencies that are critical to disaster management and response that will be housed in, this, in these two buildings, including, by the way, a satellite office for the office of the president. This is the timeline, just to show you, we are already in the construction phase. We started in January of this year, and we will finish the first phase in August of next year, continuing to the end of 2022. The second project, which I'm sure all of you are very, very excited about, is the Clark International Airport. Sabi po ni Tito Rene, finally. No, finally. Alam niyo po, these are the, these pictures that you will see, these are the final designs from Megawide GMR. The contractor who won the bid last year for the construction of the new airport terminal, adding an additional 8 million passengers per year to the airport, which brings up our capacity to 12 million. And you know, I think uh, Mr. Tony Fernandez was with you uh, yesterday, and we actually had dinner uh, with President Noel and our chairman, and he told us about his bold ideas you know, for Clark. You know? And in fact, Air Asia has already submitted a proposal to increase uh, their passengers per year out of Clark to 8 million passengers per year in five years. So Air Asia alone can already use up the entire new terminal because the capacity is 8 million passengers per year. And we are in the process of discussing with them what we need to do to make that happen. No? Um, and of course, you've already heard the pronouncements of our Secretary of Transportation uh, where he says that slowly they will also be moving some of the flights out of Naia into Clark within the year and in the coming years. So I just wanted to show you some more photos, so that's how it looks like. You know, if you notice the design, no, it's actually inspired from the mountain ranges around Clark. Kaya po yung roofing niya, eh, hindi pantay-pantay, kasi it mimics the Zambales mountain ranges and the Sokobia mountain ranges. And also the, the main uh, part of the terminal, it, it, the highest um, uh, terminal, which is I think about 20, 20 meters in ceiling height. That is higher than Hong Kong International. No? Uh, it represents Mount Arayat, of course, our beloved Mount Arayat here in Pampanga. And this is modular in design, meaning this can be doubled in capacity uh, immediately. No, dadagdagan ng puni No, so mabigas. That's the interior. Again, very modern but very Filipino. Uh, and those are other photos of Clark International Airport. And this is the timeline. Um, we will be operationalizing the new terminal by June of 2020 or if even earlier. You know? And you probably noticed that a few weeks ago, two weeks ago, we already published the bid for the operations and maintenance of the 
Clark International Airport. So we will be privatizing the operations and maintenance. Um, and uh, in fact, on Monday, we will be having our pre-bid conference. And just to tell you, I think fresh off the press, uh, already 18, one eight companies, both local and foreign, have already expressed interest. Out of the 18, already 10 have bought the bid documents. So it just goes to show you how many people, both international and local, are interested in vying for operating Clark International Airport. And it bodes well for business because they see, especially the foreign operators like Changi, Incheon, Munich, these are just some of the big names, Kuala Lumpur, um, Beijing International Airport, uh, Beijing Capital uh, International Airport, they don't go into foreign markets without seeing the viability of these, uh, of these airports. So clearly, Clark is very, very viable. So that is the timeline. And before I end, no, um, I just wanted to emphasize that baka kasi, alam niyo po, lalo uh, ng mga nakaraang gobyerno, marami na rin po kayong nakitang mga PowerPoint na ganito. No? Marami na kayong nakita. No? So, gusto ko lang pong sabihin sa inyo na sa pamumuno po ni Pangulong Duterte, hindi lang po yung, uh, yung uh, sabi nga nila, yung PPP daw, eh, hindi naman daw yun private-public partnership. PowerPoint presentation daw yun. Ang ibig sabihin, no? Kasi nga, puro PowerPoint, no? So, just to show you, just to end this, uh, and to show you na hindi lang po ito, puro PowerPoint. I just wanted to show you a 30-second video of actual construction ongoing in the new Clark City in Tapas Tarlac. And I think this was just taken a few days ago. And with this video, I want to end this short presentation. And I, again, I would like to thank the, the chambers, all the business groups here for your support. But I beg you, Secretary Raul and I and the entire government of President Duterte, beg you, please, wag po kayong maiinip at wag po kayong mawawaga ng pag-asa at sana po tuloy-tuloy lang po ang inyong suporta. With that po, maraming maraming salamat po and good afternoon. Gateway to the Pacific of Cagayan, kabahagi ng makasaysayang 27th North Luzon Area Business Conference, ang progresibong anyo ng expansion sa Freeport Zone sa North Luzon. Dito, nailatag ang Greater Cagayan Advanced Economic Zone and Freeport Plan. If you can create a map of the future, what would it look like? How would it look like? Does it define the direction towards success? Does it point to a place where an investment can give you a key to the rest of the world? How does the map render the big picture? As you plot your next big step, we at the Cagayan Economic Zone Authority continue to build the blocks to make your vision happen. Cagayan Special Economic Zone in Freeport has been evolving into a self-sustaining center for industrial, commercial, financial, and tourism recreational center in the northeastern tip of the Philippines since 1997. In the next five years, the Cagayan Freeport escalates into bigger and wider grounds 
with improved technologies, new facilities, and numerous investment opportunities. See, as you draw up your plans, CESA maps out the means for you to successfully achieve them. The Cagayan Freeport's location establishes its advantage both in land and in sea, being an important geographical venue that connects the Far East and the West. The Freeport will become a major transshipment hub, able to accommodate large containerized vessels and roll-on roll-off point that will further boost the movement of goods in the Asia-Pacific Rim and across the Philippines. By air, the construction of the Lalo International Airport increases the accessibility of the Cagayan Freeport. In addition to serving as a transportation hub, the surrounding area holds the potential as a future tourism economic zone. With the Cagayan Freeport as the next big destination to mount your vision, we make sure that opportunities and a great quality of life can be found in every corner. Capacity is anticipated in our growth. We define comfort by accommodating every possible expectation. And we define competency by identifying solutions. We also define more possibilities as we examine the wealth of this land and determine how it can contribute to greater economies and overall progress. We factor in the benefits of information technology and communication, especially as to how they will further decide the future. At the same time, at the end of the day, we underline the advantages of the rewards and the celebration of everyday victories. Our approach to land development cultivates a more sustainable approach in making sure that all these markers of advancement take into consideration that what we build is founded on a purpose and that purpose is based on a string of visions the vision to invest for the long term. The vision to find business solutions and economic returns. The vision to establish roots where the mission comes alive. All these are the blocks that are building the future of the Cagayan Free Port. Talk to us and let's map the big picture together. Good afternoon everyone. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Maya pagat panapon kikongan na imbag nga malam kadatayamin masanto siyang araw at sikatayo namin. Those are the uh, major languages I believe that uh, the participants in the, today's uh, North Luzon Area Business Conference can speak and understand. As I look across the hall, I see familiar faces, friends like the Chairman Emeritus of uh, Pampanga Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Levi Laos, who is my compadre and at the same time my colleague in the Constitutional Commission of 2006. I see a while ago uh, John Ortiz, the uh, President of Philippine uh, Exporters Association of the Philippines, I believe. Bobby Amores, of course, a while ago, the president of PCCI, Madam Alegria Limhoko. I see Mr. Jess Nick Dow here, the president of Pampanga Chamber of Commerce, and several other friends who are here. So I really am not uh, a stranger in this uh, 
familiar territory. Collectively, the uh, North Luzon Area Business uh, Council, which has a strength of uh, 200 local chamber of commerce and industry from the four regions of Northern Luzon, can very well be the catalyst of changing the political and economic uh, dynamics in this country. You have a very huge number. And being a true son coming from the north, I know that your heart is in the right spot. I hope that after listening to my speech, you're going to put your money where your heart is, and that is here in Northern Luzon, covering the three regions, one, two, three, and the Cordillera. I grew up in Pangasinan, and as a boy always seeking adventure, I imbibe a lesson that has stuck in my mind ever since. Whenever you're traveling and somehow you lost your bearings, my father told me one day, look up the sky, look for the Orsa Major or the Big Dipper, and focus on the brightest star in the constellation and you will find your way. I asked how, and he replied, as you face it, stretch your arm sideways, and your right hand points due east, and your left hand points due west. That bright star is the North Star, more popular by the name Polaris. Polaris has a special character. It seems to hug the sky, and I tell you why. It holds nearly steel or steady even while the entire northern sky moves around it. Because of this, Polaris became an unfailing beacon of light that guided the journeys of ancient mariners and even modern-day air voyagers. If you can locate the North Star, they were told you will not get lost. Ladies and gentlemen, I mentioned Polaris today because now I must invite you to explore perhaps the least visited of our four regions. So let me take you on an imaginary trip north and the brightest and farthest place you can reach traveling on land is a town in Cagayan by the name Santa Ana. Just how far north you have already traveled from kilometer zero in Manila, the distance marker along the highways will tell you. It reads 642 kilometers. It is the last distance marker you will encounter north. You are at the very edge of the island of Luzon where west, north, and east merge on a single promontory of land. To the northeast is the Northern Pacific Ocean, and to the northwest, the Baboyan Channel. This is the passageway where the Pacific Ocean's great western reach ends and where the stretch of the South China Sea or the Philippine West Sea begins. Don't be deterred by the physical distance from Manila. If you reverse the perspective and regard Santa Ana in the context of the region to the north, which is East Asia, you will discover how close you are to the biggest, busiest, and wealthiest port cities of the region. You are closest to the shipping routes along the northern passageway of ocean liners, which ferry products and goods from East Asia to the North and South Pacific and vice versa. And Port Irene, the jewel of the Cagayan Special Economic Zone and Freeport is nearest to these routes more than any port in Luzon. But all these years of its existence, the Cagayan Freeport admittedly has underachieved and Port Irene itself has underperformed, although it is in the region on Earth that has recorded the fastest growth rate in this decade. It is a microcosm of what used to be an underperforming Philippine economy, its failings as well as its flaws. We cannot rewrite the Freeport's past, but we can change its future. And we have the will to do it, consistent with President Duterte's willful leadership that has ushered the country into an age of change. Change sometimes makes us shudder, but when managed well, change is going to be the fountain spring of economic and social benefits. During the late 1980s and early 1990s, when change came sweeping much of Eastern Europe, the incoming governor of California, Pat Wilson, 
seeing how change has abruptly come, said something in his inaugural address that still steers the hearts and mind. He said, and I quote, we will not suffer the future. We will shape it. We will not simply grow. We will manage our growth. We will not passively experience change. We will make change. But to shape the future, we need a new vision of government, a vision of federal system of government. This administration undoubtedly has in the pursuit of the country's goals. The spirit of change has cascaded and we now feel it everywhere. We sense it in our people's rising optimism about the future. And we feel it in the heightened sense of pride which the country's rising economic status has generated. A few days ago, economic data confirmed that the country is in the second fastest growing economy in Asia, propelled by its 6.8% GDP for the first quarter of this year. Historically, the Philippines has had bright opportunities to grow into a major Asian economy in the 1970s. But over the decades when the opportunities were there for the grabbing, we Filipinos simply could not get over the hump. Many times that failure has been self-inflicted. For instance, in the bureaucracy or even in some workplaces in the private sector, we encounter workers who even ask to do something, turn in their output and say, Pwede na yan. It is the Filipino expression for work that is not quite up to high standards, but somehow passable. Pwede na yan. When we dream of big things but end up with something less, pwede na yan. It breeds an attitude of halfway measures such as half-hearted efforts and half-baked commitments to our goals, even if we know we are a talented, capable people. I am certain that our people can do better, and many will agree with me that they will do better if they realize that they have a stake in the future and that their efforts will not go for naught. The truth is, for decades, they have been excluded from the enjoyment of economic and social benefits by the old oligarchs and their minions that completely dominated our politics. The stranglehold of oligarchs on political power led to economic policies that multiplied the wealth of the rich many times over and multiplied the wars of our poor even more, driving them deeper into the ground. Now we have a president who is an outsider to the oligarchs and who understands the plight of the poor. We will do what is right for our people to propel our country forward, he said. And federalism, federalism is the way forward. Already we are feeling the impact of his decisive actions, whether fighting the evils of uh, drugs, of corruption, and of criminality, or racing to modernize our inadequate infrastructure with a massive funding program never before seen in our country. The Build, Build, Build program not only has promoted higher growth, created jobs, and raised the incomes of almost every sector of society, but when the 75 major projects are completed, airports and seaports, highways and roads and bridges, for instance, it will also have united our archipelagic nation into a network of interconnected communities and peoples. This is the main reason you should not miss the new opportunities opening up in the Philippines. A state of northern Luzon, composed of the four regions, is the ideal setup for us if we become a federal system of government. My dear friends, now comes the critical question. Why come to Northern Luzon and more specifically to the Cagayan Freeport, not as tourists but as an investor? Why commit money, resources, time, and talent to this tiny enclave? If in real estate, buying a house or a place involves only three things, location, 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 putting your stake in CESA involves the same factors plus more. CESA is a great place to invest, first, because of its geography, second, because of its natural resources, and third, and perhaps the factor that tips the balance because of its sound, stable leadership. 
In a time of change, outstanding leadership is critically needed. At the risk of being immodest, I feel that things have begun to look up at CESA since my assumption to the post as administrator and CEO nine months ago. Two months ago, we obliterated Port Irene's long-time reputation as a haven for contraband used cars. Three months ago, we received our international ISO certification for good governance. On March 18, we put 14 luxury vehicles, Porsches, Maserati's, Mercedes-Benz, BMWs under the crushing weight of bulldozers and backhoes. That is just for starters. I have still 800 plus of vehicles to crush in the next three months. And I am not going to be deterred by the threat of being charged in court by some of these unscrupulous businessmen some of them are even holding powerful positions in government. I will not relate the difficult fight we have had to face to get what that historic moment, but I will tell you what our beloved president said after witnessing the condemnation and public destruction of contraband vehicles. It signifies our resolve, he said, to restore good governance, preserve our nation's dignity, and safeguard our people's welfare. That change is important because now Port Irene has cast off its shady image and once destroyed its dignity and credibility, and it has now acquired the aura of a port town where you can do business the right way and build your dream there. And it is all because we have provided stable leadership that it is the epitome of good governance, a leadership that is immune from pressure and immune to favoritism, which means that all comers will be treated fairly, justly, and given equal access to opportunity. And let me assure you, there are opportunities in the Freeport more than can be explored by a single company. It has vast agricultural lands, navigable rivers, and natural resources. Nature has blessed it with some of the best spots for magnificent gateways and adventures you'll ever find its rugged landscapes virgin forest, and clear untouched beaches of fine white sand 50 kilometers more of stretch from Santana down to the town of Petaran. Add to these factors its strategic location along the major nautical highways of the north, and you are looking at an economic zone that could become possibly the next boom area in Luzon and perhaps the entire country in the next 10 to 25 years. The new air link of the region and the country called the Cagayan North International Airport is soon to become fully operational. You can fly from the city in East Asia and land in Lalu Town, which is only 45 minutes by car to the heartland of Sessa in Santa Ana. Port Irene is being rehabilitated and modernized. Its base soon to be expanded and dredged at the same time at no cost to the Philippine government. These activities are being carried out simultaneously and mark the beginnings of Port Irene's transformation into a transshipment hub for goods and products of the Northern Pacific and East Asia. New submarine cables, courtesy of your Pampangan businessman, Dennis Oy, who signed an MOU with me a month ago will provide secure lines and instant speedy communication to any point in the world have enhanced its connectivity. We have received proposals for new power plants to provide clean energy and stable supply. A multimodal transportation system consisting of a new expressway between Santa Ana and Lalo and between Lalo and Tugigarao and a new parallel railway is being planned to become the backbone for the movement of cargo and people. And we are a few days away from Summit on Financial Technologies. This will be on May 21 and May 22 to be held at the Manila House Private Club in Bonifacio Global City. We are going to hold our FinTech Summit that will feature all about blockchain, cryptocurrency, and the other modern way of doing business. We are going to create the first financial technology zone in Santa Ana, and we are going to establish the Financial Technology and Blockchain University in Santa Ana this year. 
Our dream in Santana is to have blockchain and cryptocurrency firms set up shop where they could operate virtual exchanges, back office exchange operation, cryptocurrency mining, and initial coin offerings. Last year, when I assumed office, I have canceled more than 200 licenses of internet gaming because I believe it is unfair and unjust for the country and for our people that CESA license are given, but the operations are held in Manila, Makati, and elsewhere in the country. I lost more than 100 million revenue a month, but Pagcor earned more than 6 billion pesos of revenue and earning more than 1 billion revenue a month for these IGL licenses that I have canceled. For CESA to achieve its vision, we need partners, more local partners, and above all, more foreign partners. Yesterday, one of your speakers, Mr. Anthony Fernandez of Air Asia, was here. His, his people have visited me already. We have already started our discussion of making Lalo, the Cagayan North International Airport, to be one of the hub of Air Asia. I am here to ask for partners in our enterprise, come and be a part of the change in the Philippines. I invite you to see Santa Ana now and compare what's going to happen after six months or after one year. Explore the investment opportunities up north in the freeport and you will not get lost. Catch some daring adventures too. An adventure and fun in Santa Ana are more enjoyable, more exciting, and more memorable. Change your perspective. Invite your friends. Find the latest and the best treasures of Luzon. Look north. Come to the converging points of the seas and oceans. Be daring. Be audacious. Be builder of dreams. Thank you. Para maintindihan natin how a PPP uh, project works. I'll give you a project overview of a site. Uh, this will show you the uh, current uh, dilapidated and uh, unkept uh, public market that has not been improved and rehabilitated for the last 15 years. So talagang pag uh, umuulan sa labas, sa loob ng public market umuulan din. So um, the city or the LGU got in touch with us and then uh, thereby we uh, exchanged ideas, we explored the uh, uh, possible opportunities and uh, needs of the city. And uh, along that line, uh, we always take the route of the PPP. So we normally would uh, go the route of uh, submitting an unsolic unsolicited proposal. Project of the objectives, of course, is to uh, always realize the best use of a site in terms of social, economic, and environmental benefit to the city. Of course, the second one, is, second one is to provide livelihood and employment opportunities to the communities. Lastly, of course, we want to provide a convenient, modern uh, town center or a public market that will also generate local tourists, uh, local tourists and foreign tourists alike. Emerging opportunities in agriculture, ito ang naging tampok sa pagbubukas ng Plenary 5. Ang pagtatagpo ng mga mamumuhunan, supplier at producer, pati na ang mga magsasaka, nagbunga ng isang resolusyon at makabuluhang talakayan. Tumayo bilang session chairman si Ms. Gigi Simbulan ng PCCO Regional Governor 3, kasama ang mga tumayong resource speaker na sina, Mr. Danilo Sanchez, President, Agriman Enterprises Company Incorporated, Mr. Richard Sanz, CFE, President, Philippine Franchising Association, CEO, The Food Asia Group, Mr. Roberto C. Amores, President, Phil Foodex, Chairman, Agri Committee. First, description of Philippine agriculture. Ang Philippine agriculture po is composed of 15.8 million hectares of forest land, out of which 14.2 hect 14 million hectares are alienable or disposable. Itong 14.2 million hectares, 93% is suitable for agriculture. 93% is 13.2 million hectares. Next, please. 
The Philippine agriculture's contribution to GDP is 10%. Pero pag isinama natin yung mga processing activities, Central Luzon, specifically Region 3, is one of the bigger contributors to the agri-food industry. As far is the agribusiness support for promotion and investments in regional exposition, a collaborative project of the DTI, the Department of Agriculture, PCCI, and the business support organizations, Field Export, Field Foodex, and the other organizations, purposely to secure food availability, increase farmers' income, and reformat agriculture sector. So what is ASPIRE? DTI's partnership with DA, DA's partnership with the support organizations like PCCI constitute the program called ASPIRE. And what are the deliverables that we have envisioned here? Next, please. Good production for our farmers, equivalent to good quality raw materials for our processors. Good price, not necessarily high price, but competitive price for our producers and reliable supply for our processors. And steady and sustainable market for our producers, farmers, at a reasonable competitive price. In our business conference in Arizona last year, ang talagang number one na uh, demand in the world is cacao. Oho, kaya if you can plant more cacao, kung maduplicate nyo yung ginawa ng Dabao, well, siguro ho ay uh, uh, ma, ma, we will gain much dito sa cacao. And then, mind you, ang number two ho na demand in the world, hindi ho nababanggit, is avocado. Yan ho ang kailangan sa world market. The, dalawa ho yan, cacao at number two is avocado. Kaya kung may mga interested ho doon sa avocado, well, I guess you can try. In other countries, uh, when, uh, the, when they participate in the trade shows, it is their Department of Agriculture that participates and pushes the restaurants and the field, the, their brands. In, in fact, uh, an example is uh, in Korea. It is the Korean uh, Ministry of Agriculture that participates and pushes the brands, the Korean brands, uh, to go international. So I think uh, the DA should also have a part with, in uh, promoting our Filipino cuisine. Not only the products, but the Filipino as a cuisine. In fact, uh, Thai cuisine, Vietnamese cuisine are very popular now, but Filipino cuisine, hindi pa masyadong kilala. So that is something that we want to see in the near future. Ang 27th North Luzon Area Business Conference ay naging daan rin para buksan ang mga usapin hinggil sa tinatawag na developing tech-based for consumers. Ito'y bahagi ng Plenary 6, ang Technology Innovations for Micro, Medium, Small Entrepreneurs. Tumayo bilang session chairman si Mr. Alexander Ang, PCO Regional Governor Region 1. Resource Speaker, Engineer Jovito Ray Gonzalez, Chief Investment and Business Operations, Technology Generators, Oliver Evangelista, Industrial Technology Development Institute, ITDI-DOST, Rosemary G. Garcia, Food and Nutrition Research Institute, FNRI-DOST, Ray Mariposque, Metals Industry Research and Development Center, DOST. This plenary will look into the three innovations that will promote efficiencies in agribusiness. See, similar to the objective of the plenary in agriculture, we hope to have effective matches between our guests, technology generators, and the companies in the agribusiness sector present here today. So, a message lang po. Innovation works. Provided we put our acts together. Hindi lang pang po ito DOST. Kasama po namin kayo dapat ang PCCI to make innovation works. Maraming salamat po. 
Isa sa pinakatampok sa tao ng North Luzon Area Business Conference ay ang mga naibabalangkas na resolusyon ng mga PCCI Governor. This is exactly what we are here for and um, we have, would like to share with you the conference resolutions. Ladies and gentlemen of the North Luzon Area Business Conference, um, members of the various chambers, friends and guests, I am um, honored to read to you the conference resolutions uh, generated during this conference. First, a resolution urging the Office of the President to revive the Regional Project Monitoring and Evaluation System in the Infrastructure Monitoring Task Force Project's Performance Tracking System, Proof Performance System in short to ensure that the build, build, build projects are delivered in a timely manner and in measurable terms with transparency and thorough documentation and to institutionalize the business sector representation in said task force represented by the PCCI at the national level and the PCCI local chambers at the local levels. Resolution number two, a resolution urging the Office of the President, the National Economic Development Authority or NEDA, the Department of Finance, the Department of Tourism, the Department of Transportation, the Department of Public Works and Highways to build on the potentials of the Philippine tourism industry through the acceleration of infrastructure network projects and the reduction of passenger service charges to capitalize on the expanding budget travelers. Palakpakan po. Thank you. Resolution number three, a resolution endorsing to the Office of the President and appropriate agencies, projects on road and airport infrastructure, agribusiness, the investment priorities plan of the Cordillera Administrative Region or CAR, the Cordillera Regional Development Plan, and the Burnham Park Development Plan, which have been submitted by CAR Regional Development Council to the National Economic Development Authority to develop the potentials of the region. Let's give that a big round of applause. And resolution number four, a resolution requesting His Excellency Rodrigo Roa Duterte, President of the Republic of the Philippines, to allocate 1,000 square meters from the dairy farm located at Green Valley, Baguio City, for the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Baguio Benguet Chapter, Inc., for the establishment of a multi-purpose livelihood and skills training center, pur purposely for the agripreneurs, micro, small, and medium enterprises, not only in the city of Baguio City, but for the entire Cordillera region. <laughs> Resolutions adopted this 19th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2018, during the 27th North Luzon Area Business Conference held at the Laos um, Business Center in San Fernando City, Pampanga. Uh, may we request uh, res uh, Regional Governor GG to turn over the Philippine Chamber of Commerce banner as a sign of turnover, ta turning over the hosting of the Era Business Conference for next year to Regional Governor Tom Panis. Ang progresibong hakbang ng 27th North Luzon Area Business Conference sa pag-asenso ng bawat taga-North at Central Luzon ang mapag-isa at walang maiwanan sa yaman ng bayan mula sa iisang rehiyon. Ako po si Jake Morales at ito ang 27th North Luzon Area Business Conference Central Luzon TV 36 Special Coverage. One region, one station.